Hey everybody, my name is Kamina Sue and welcome to my channel Strength Karma. Today I'm absolutely delighted to have an expert in a condition that very few people actually talk about. So this is Sarah Mapes. Uh, she is a, a qualified yoga teacher, 500 hour yoga teacher, and she is the, also the founder of the Bone Builder program. So welcome Sarah to this interview. Hi, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Good to have you here. So Sarah, why don't you go ahead and, and tell us a little bit about yourself and, and the fact that you are, you've dedicated yourself to helping people with osteopenia and osteoporosis and using yoga as a powerful tool to help with those conditions. So it's a very um, specific area of expertise that you have. So why don't you go ahead and tell us a bit about your background? So in my family, there's a history of caregiving. Mom had the opportunity to take care of my great grandma and I took care of my grandmother. And um, during the time that my grandma lived with me, she had two hip fractures. And so I experienced what going through an osteoporotic fracture was like firsthand. At that point, I wasn't a yoga teacher and I didn't know that there was anything that could be done to help to prevent or to reverse osteoporosis. After I took care of my grandma, when I went through yoga teacher training, it was just mentioned in passing that there were things that you could do to help to prevent and to even reverse osteoporosis. And that was just like lighting the match for me. I became enthralled and I did a lot of research and looked at all different kinds of medical studies and sources and different things. I had no idea in yoga and outside of yoga that there were all kinds of things that you can really do to help with osteoporosis. For those of us who might not be too familiar, we've heard of osteoporosis, like what, what is it exactly? What is that condition? What is, and what is osteopenia? That's a great question. So there are some numbers involved here. <laughs> there's a range. So there's like picture the bell curve. And in the middle is, is a person with um, say a zero. When you go out in either direction to a one, to a plus one or a minus one, on the plus one side, you're gonna have somebody who has healthy bones. And on the minus one side, you'll have hit the, the osteopenia range. So osteopenia means that you have an, a certain amount of bone density loss. Your bones are going to, there's, there's a lattice structure that runs through the bones and the lattice structure isn't as thick. Um, some of the, the bone is starting to soften to get a little bit mushy to not be quite so strong. And then osteoporosis takes that a step further, going to our bell curve again. If you go out to a minus two, then you've hit the osteoporosis range. Are there, are there any ways to uh, diagnose this before it's, it's too late, before you break a bone? There are not symptoms except for a fracture other than having a bone density scan. Typically mm -hmm. bone density scans, it's called a DEXA. And that test isn't typically done until people are between the ages of 60 and 65, at which point there's, there's already a significant amount of bone density loss. They call it the silent disease because of fractures, usually the first symptom. Things to keep in mind about that um, and why prevention is so important is that most of our bone density is built while we're young and we reach a, a peak bone density mass at about age 30. And after age 30, everyone starts to gradually lose a certain amount of bone density loss unless we're actively working to really maintain our bones. Um, right. There's a huge drop off for postmenopausal women. Postmenopausal women have a sudden drop off in estrogen, and that, that leads to a big drop off in bone density. With regard to, um, to prevention, so is if, if, if someone's watching this and saying, well, you know, I actually, I walk several, I mean, like I walk every day or maybe I run or I play a sport. Are those things enough in your view to, to prevent the condition? The types of exercise that we do are really important. Um, walking is, is, a, is a great thing to bring up. The walking, oh, the walking. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So walking, if you are walking for a significant period of time, say 45 minutes, and you're doing a brisk walk, not a, a slow walk. Oh, the neighborhood is so beautiful. Look at these flowers. I'm just loving this experience of being out in nature. That is not enough to have to build strong bones. It can be therapeutic and wonderful and can help you to get your vitamin D, but right. it's, it's not 
It's not enough for actually bone building. Fast walking for a significant period of time is good for your hips. It isn't going to do much for your spine unless you wear a weighted vest. Mm -hmm. So thinking about fractures, the spine is where we have our most common fractures. We have compression fractures. These tend to happen from poor posture and from things that we do in daily life. Yep, I can see you sitting up tall just as I'm talking <laughs> about like, it. Yeah, right. up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that posture that we come into where we're sitting at a desk and, and, and we're, we come into a random spine or we're sitting on the sofa, staring over our phones or our computers in today's world, all of those things create a, a rounding of the spine. And, and we, those compression fractures are often coming from having poor posture for years and years and years. Posture is something that people can work on at any age that really helps to prevent compression fractures in the spine. Mm -hmm. Things to keep in, in mind that are really important on the exercise front are weight bearing exercise. We wanna have some amount of weight bearing exercise to maintain our bones. One of the key things to keep in mind is how are we using our bones? What kinds of exercise are we doing? Are we using our muscles in a way that's going to create good stress for our bones? Other types of exercise that are important to kind of keep an eye out for, Swimming is wonderful and cycling is wonderful. Both of those are great if you want cardiovascular exercise. Mm -hmm. They don't do anything to help to protect our bones. Get in the pool and you have a lovely water aerobics class and people are thinking, oh, this is great as I age because it's low impact and I'm not going to hurt my knees or anything like that, mm -hmm. but it doesn't help to protect your bones. Um, why do you think yoga is effective for osteoporosis and osteopenia? Yoga is a, a wonderful way to, to be effective, um, to work, to protect somebody, or even to reverse bone density loss, because we can use our body to create good stress for our bones. You can leverage your muscles using your own body weight to, it's not just any yoga class. A gentle yoga class can have wonderful therapeutic benefits. I'm all for them. They just aren't helpful for bone building specifically. For mm -hmm. bone building, we need a specific type a practice that's focused on um, holding specific poses for specific lengths of time. You can do yoga poses that are specific to those parts of the body to strengthen the spine, to strengthen the hips. You can even do some things to strengthen wrists. So working strategically using yoga to approach the parts of the body that are most likely to fracture, I think is one of yoga's best strengths. But something Excellent. really important to keep in mind got this big warning out here for anyone that thinks, oh, I'm going to go take a yoga class. When we, we do a lot of forward folds in yoga. So those forward folds create that, that rounding motion in the spine, which is fine if you're still in the osteopenia range. But if you actually have an osteoporosis diagnosis, do not round your spine in yoga class. That could actually cause a compression fracture. So I had the opportunity to do two, two trainings with Dr. Lauren Fishman. And he is an Iyengar yoga teacher who had the opportunity to study years ago with Mr. Iyengar. And he's also a physician. He has spent a lot of time and energy doing research about osteoporosis in yoga and actually some, some other medical conditions as well and, and looking at how that can help. Um, doing the training with him was so insightful and I learned so much. I'm, I'm very grateful to him for all of his research. One of the things that I noticed in doing the training is that bone building takes a lot of work. People have to hold poses. They have to engage their muscles. It's very different from a gentle yoga class that is enjoyable in a different way. Bone building takes work and it's hard. And to be able to do some of the poses and the things that are required, um, yoga teachers, other yoga teachers were struggling to be able to, to do that. It was challenging. People are like, that hurts. I can't do that. I'm exhausted. Mm. So one of the things that I realized was really important is that people need to build strength really gradually. It needs to be totally accessible. So there are, one of the things that I really focus on in my program, before we get to the bone building, it's about building the strength so that every step of the way is approachable. It's accessible. So in, in the program that I've developed, I've done a lot of things to help people build the strength gradually. You can start out anywhere. It's never too late. You can always come in. 
you can modify any pose. There's there's always a way to make it work in your body where you are. And so what kind of poses do you do, you do in your um, in your program? My triangle pose is, is a wonderful example um, of a pose that's going to create good stress for both the spine, the hips, the thigh bones. Thigh bones and hips are really grouped together for osteoporosis fractures. Um, you have just as many femur, the big bone in your thigh, kinds of fractures as you do hip fractures. So poses that are going to strengthen your legs and your hips and your spine are really good. Things that are really important that we work on in the program are poses that are going to build strength in your back and, um, and in your legs and hips. We're also going to work on poses that are going to improve posture and balance. Balance poses are something that are really beneficial for the hips specifically. As we age, balance can become a larger issue. So it may be good to have a chair or a wall or another person there even to spot you. But just lifting that foot up off the ground is going to load the weight into your other hip. And that's really good for the hips. So poses like tree pose are, are really huge. There are some other balancing poses that we do um, some versions of poses like half moon um, are, are good too, but but tree pose is, is you have to do that one in every practice, right? It's oh, just, absolutely. It's, it's <laughs> just a good thing. Pose. <laughs> it's, so, it's, it's, just, it's just so much to it. Like it's, it's, it's something you just can't force and you have to be so present in order to um, not harden in tree pose, I find. And like you, when, you look, when you look at a tree, they are so graceful. They don't have that rigidity right when they, they move with the wind and that's just something that I always try to think about when I'm ever I'm in, in tree pose or teaching tree pose um, to have that fluidity which is actually what we want with our bones right not just bone density but also to have the resilience we do we want that resilience we want to be able to catch ourselves if we fall and balance is an important part of preparing ourselves to be able to do just that how do our bodies respond? How do we react? Sounds like what, not only are you addressing like the physiological aspects um, of um, bone building but also there's a confidence that that that's created as well when someone does feel more centered and more able to engage with their environment without feeling like they they're just like a walking time bomb you know when you're doing things that are going to strengthen your bones you have that peace of mind of knowing hey i'm i'm i can do something that's actually likely going to be measurable on a dexa scan but also I have better balance. I can feel that in my body. I know that I'm less likely to have a fall. And the peace of mind that that is going to provide is, is just huge to be able to know mm -hmm. I'm not as likely to fall. I'm, I'm steady on my feet. I, I know how to move. It, it, it's going to feel good all over. So what are, some, um, what are some tips that you've got for somebody who is watching this and maybe they have a history of osteoporosis, maybe like someone like yourself who had a grandmother or great grandmother that had the condition is it is it a quite a strong likelihood of someone developing it of say their grandparent has it or is it i mean how closely yeah. how closely related is it like that we osteoporosis is one of those things that has so much to do with our lifestyle are we are we eating are we exercising properly are we doing things that have weight bearing exercise um are we getting the calcium are we getting the vitamin d are, are all of the right things going into our bodies? And are we doing the right things with our bodies? So there's a great deal that we can do that's environmental, not just hereditary. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly hereditary is, is going to create a, a greater likelihood, but there's, there's so much we can do. Things that I would tell someone, um, if they're wanting to prevent it, I would, I would tell them, get your vitamin D checked, do this with the doctor because it is a fat soluble vitamin and we can get too much. Know where you are, know if you're in a healthy range, and then work on either supplementing that or um, making sure that you're getting sunshine every single day. <laughs> um, or fish. Salmon is a, is a great place to get the vitamin D. It's something that's going to have weight-bearing exercise. If you're a person that loves to cycle or swim or walk, do some weightlifting. Find or use your own body weight in a yoga class. Um, planking, balancing poses, standing postures. These are all great ways to create good stress for your bones. So find the right kinds of exercise. Mm -hmm. Be consciously aware of your posture. So diet, exercise, and posture. Diet, exercise, and posture. 
Right. That sounds like a pretty good uh, formula there for good health for anybody, not just for someone who might be worried about osteopenia and osteoporosis. And Sarah, if someone was interested, if they have, if they, if they'd like to find out more about your Bone Builder program, where can they find out more about that? And how can they find you? The best way to get a hold of me would be to email me at sarah at bonebuildersystem.com. So if you want to reach out, I'd be happy to answer questions or to put you on my mailing list. But Sarah at bonebuildersystem.com is a great way to get a hold of me. Look, Sarah, thank you so much for your time today. I think that was very insightful um, and especially and quite thought provoking. Um, a lot of people, I don't think, think about these conditions until it's too late. So I'm so glad that we're here today talking about them. And if you want to uh, find out more um, great content, um, please subscribe to my channel. I have I'm building this interview series right now. So thanks so much for watching this one and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for joining me, Sarah.